Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Woo! Tonight is Shabbat, and tonight's Torah story and the story and message for the week ahead is Bamidbar. And this is the story, this is the Shabbat right before Shavuot, a very huge holy time, a very big holy day, celebrating the receiving of the Torah. And last week's portion, last week's story was Bechukotai. And in that story, we discussed curses. So the Kabbalistic secret of Bamidbar, this following portion, is to create a wall between the curses and the blessings, to create a wall between that negativity and the positivity that is on its way, the very big light that's on its way with Shavuot. So this story, Bamidbar, should prepare us. We're preparing. We are in a time of preparation to receive the Torah and all that that symbolizes, to receive that light, to receive that love. Shavuot is a time of immortality and global healing. So we're preparing for that. So understanding, remembering that last week we were talking about the curses and how our path can be cursed if we don't follow the commandments, we now need to turn it around and prepare for the blessings. So Bamidbar is known as a wall protecting us from the negativity. But of course, we can't just expect that wall to pop up, to just manifest on its own. We need to do the work. So this is the time with the Shabbat Bamidbar. It's a time for us to clear, to do all that we can to prepare in mind, in body, and in spirit, to connect to that light that is incoming, that's on its way with Shavuot. So some good conversations you can have with family and friends tonight and in the week ahead would be, you know, what negativity am I letting go of? What negativity have I become aware of so that I can let go of it? In what ways can I take this purification process into my own hands? How can I take accountability for my own clearing and cleansing? Which I know, me being a a microcosm of the macrocosm, I know is going to affect the whole. I know that this clearing and cleansing process that I'm consciously participating in is going to affect the whole. This is how we reach immortality with this awareness of our connectivity. And this is how we reach global healing with our awareness of our connectivity as we perform this purification process for ourself, remaining aware that it's for the one larger self. And some little notes about this story. Um, in Bamidbar, uh, Hashem, God, instructs that there be a, um, a consensus taken, so a counting of all the members of all the tribes. And we come to this point right before Shavuot because there had to be 600,000 Jews for the Torah to be received. There's this whole idea that quantity does enhance quality in certain circumstances. And it's not a matter of any person being more valuable than another. That's not the case at all. Each person has the same potential. Each person has that same quality of light. So it doesn't matter who it is, but there needs to be a certain count. It's kind of like think of um, sacred numerology or dumatria. Numbers do matter. Quantity does matter in some cases. Some of you may know the word minyan. And what a minyan is, is 10 Jews or 10 10 people in prayer. Okay? Really, let's look at the definition of Jews um, in a sense that it means one who's connected to the light, simply put. Okay? So, So you don't have to call it a Jew, but let's say one who is connected to source. You need 10 of those beings in connection, in holy connection, to create what's called a minyan. And when you have a minyan, 10 people, it takes the power of the group to the next level. Okay, so th- this really touches on the whole idea of the virtue of inclusivity. Why is inclusiveness a virtue? Because we can do more together. We are better together. On our own, we have everything we need within us. Yes, but if we all share one ideal, if we all unite in one goal, we are much more powerful. Light joining light. It's very powerful. So that's kind of the idea that's hidden here in Bamidbar, a Kabbalistic concept that's hidden in this story. Okay, so quantity does in some cases enhance 
quality, when we're talking about the goal of the whole. Um, and something that we mentioned there um, was holding a key. When we're talking about inclusivity, it also reminds us that when we do this count, we take this count of all the people in Bamidbar, it's reminding us, yes, that we need a certain number of people to come together to receive that light, but it's really about the coming together as well. Speaking of inclusivity, it's not just about taking the count, it's also about uniting. It's about uniting and the intention in which we are uniting. So think about it, before the Torah was received at Sinai, there was the counting, 600,000 of the people, of the children of Israel, but there was also unification, camping at Sinai in the tents, gathering was a key. So unity is a key in Bamidbar in preparation for receiving that light of immortality that comes with Shavuot. Okay, so it's the counting, making sure we have enough of us to make this happen, then it's the unity gathering us together, and then it's the shared ideal, the shared goal of what? Peace. So these are the key messages of Bamidbar, which is the story preparing us for Shavuot, which comes every year. It's really, when you think about the story of Shavuot and receiving the Torah at Sinai, it's whether you think it really happened or not, doesn't matter. We're celebrating it every year because, because of what it's representing in nature and the cosmos. Just like all of the Torah stories, there's a hidden key that's reflecting uh, um, an opportunity for growth that pertains to that particular part of the cycle that we're experiencing in nature and the cosmos. So Shavuot is coming, which means what is coming is simply an opportunity to draw in greater light, to draw in greater awareness of immortality, to promote global healing. And every year we have this opportunity. Okay, so it's coming. And the key things to remember are, yes, sometimes quantity does enhance quality. So how many of your friends and family members can you gather right now at this holy time? Gather truly in physicality, ideally, and then discuss and unite in that shared goal of peace. Okay, so these are the key messages of Bemidbar. This is how you access the secrets of this story by asking yourself, as Shavuot approaches, as this sacred opportunity approaches, how can I gather as many of my people as possible? Meaning, how can I gather as many, um, you know, aware, connected, loving people as possible physically? And if you can't, then at least virtually, God, we're blessed with these opportunities now with all this technology, 2022, right? So how can we gather to the best of our ability, hopefully in physical presence, all of these tribe members of ours, and then as we gather, unite in that goal of peace with the awareness of our connectivity to promote the consciousness of immortality and to promote not just healing within our tribe, but within our one global tribe. This is how you enhance your potential to harness the energy that is about to come in with Shavuot. Bamidbar, hold these secrets for us. The stories are all connected. It's a sequence. So we are preparing to receive that light. How do you best prepare? How do you best maximize your potential to capitalize on that great energy that is incoming right now? Bamidbar holds the keys. Gather as many as possible and get as close as possible as you can. Unity and peace are the other keys. Quantity, gather, unity, peace. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Have an awesome Shabbat. Um, I'll see you for the first quarter activation. We just had the new moon activation the other day. So if you missed it, check it, check it out. It's on Royal Path Tarot on Facebook. It's also on Rebecca Magic YouTube channel and Instagram. So get in the portal if you didn't yet. And blessed preparations for Shavuot. Um, if you want to know more about the holiday of Shavuot, I did share a video a couple years ago. I'm going to repost it on our Shabbat crew wall. So if you want to dive a little bit deeper, check that out, or just go on YouTube and type in Kabbalah Shavuot or Kabbalistic Secrets of Shavuot or Google that. There's so much information out there, so many perspectives, so many great minds and great rabbis that you can learn from and hear from their wisdom and their perspectives. And then please share in our private group Shabbat crew on Facebook, or even just in the comments um, when this gets loaded to YouTube, 
share what you see, what you learn, share your unique perspective on Bamidbar and preparing for Shavuot. Share what you think Shavuot is and how you're going to harness that energy with your family and friends or maybe just on your own if you're all you have right now. But remember, the whole message of Bamidbar, quantity does enhance quality. There's a time and a place. Just think about sacred numerology. Think about gematria. So many people say, oh, size doesn't matter or quantity doesn't matter, quality over quantity. And there is a lot of wisdom in that. Absolutely. There's even a tarot card for that. Quality over quantity. Of course, there is truly only one. But in this world of multiplicity, we can use that separation or those distinctions amongst the different parts of the one to enhance that one. Remember, the, the sum of the parts is, or what is it? The, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts or whatever that quote is, you know what I'm saying? We all have a unique part to play and we can use separation and uniqueness to enhance the one. So there is a secret to quantity enhancing quality in certain cases. And when it comes to prayer and when it comes to ritual, there is power in inclusivity. There is power in our unity. So gather, gather, gather the tribe. Now is the time. Shalom. Shabbat shalom.